Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my 2018 beauty favorites video. My yearly favorites, I cannot believe I'm already filming this video again. I feel like I just filmed this video. How, how has it been a year already? I have no idea. Makeup keeps launching, the world keeps turning, and my smile lines keep getting deeper. Happy New Year, everyone. So I do this video every year where I sit down and I tell you guys all of my most used favorite products of the year and why I love them and why you need them and why they are so good. These are like the top dogs of the entire year. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like this year I really was a creature of habit, especially this year. I was using a lot of the same thing over and over again. So a lot of these products you might really be familiar with, but it is what it is. But there's some other good stuff in here I wanna share. And honestly, these were my favorite favorite most used products in 2018. Um, I'm just doing strictly makeup for this video because if I do like random or skincare or anything like that, this video would be a thousand years long. My monthly favorites videos are super long, so I can just imagine how long this video is going to be. Before I get into this, I do want to say thank you guys so much for your sweet comments and your messages. I know you guys know that I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety. I feel like this year has been very, very uh, stressful. I feel like I really need to work on how I handle stress because I buckle under pressure and you my old one on bustle that was so. My number one goal for 2019 is to try to take things a little bit easier and not to overthink and not to overstress every little thing in my life. And I would really love to achieve that in this new year. I would love to know what you guys look forward to this year. All I know is that I hope you guys have a lot of happiness and health, most importantly health. And I hope you guys are just surrounded with love. Starting with here, you guys are my first favorites, I have to say. I am so grateful for my subscribers. You definitely are a yearly favorite. Every single year, you guys are amazing and life can sometimes get the best of me. I'm very, very much aware of that, but you guys still manage to stay by my side and still watch me and support me and just be so sweet all the time. And I can't, I can't thank you guys enough. So thank you, you're my first favorite. So I'm gonna try to breeze through these products. I'm really gonna try to hit the key points and move on because, I mean, all right, so let's talk face products. The Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer is hands down, I would have to say my favorite primer of all time at this point. It's the one that I definitely use most often. I do have a few other ones I like a lot, but I just always go back to this one. This is actually the second year in a row where this primer wins. I like that this has hyaluronic acid in it. It just always really moisturizes my skin. I feel like it primes the skin while adding a lot of moisture. That's why it's called a primerizer because it's like a primer and a moisturizer in one. And it's amazing for those of us with dry skin. It honestly just leaves your skin feeling so plump and hydrated. I love this. So for foundation, I still pretty much love all the same foundations I did last year. My Hourglass Stick, my Makeup Forever Stick, my Makeup Forever Face and Body, those are all foundations I love and adore and I still use them. But this year I got so much use out of these two foundations and well, this is a CC cream, but this one especially really surprised me. I would say out of all my drugstore foundations, this is the one that I used the most this year. And I feel like I discovered it later in the year, but regardless, I used it so much more than all my other drugstore foundations. It's so easy to apply. It has this giant doe foot applicator. You can just swipe this on your face. It blends out in seconds and it blends into your skin like a dream. It honestly looks like skin. It's called the Healthy Foundation for a reason. Physician's Formula is a little bit pricier for the drugstore, so it's not the cheapest foundation at CVS or anything like that, but it makes my skin look so beautiful, fresh, and youthful, and I love it, and I'm always, always reaching for it. So, I mean, that's gotta tell you something. I forgot to turn on my other little lights. Much better. <laughs> you can't even see them. And of course, this one is no surprise to any of you. This has quickly become my favorite CC cream. I think it's the best one out there. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Buildable Blur CC Cream with Blur Effect Technology, SPF 35. This is what I'm wearing on my skin right now. It has amazing coverage for a CC cream. You can get full coverage with this. I love how it lasts on my skin. I feel like it looks really pretty all day. It gives me that in-between finish. It's not matte or anything, but it's not too dewy or slippy like a lot of other CC creams. It's honestly perfect. I have nothing negative to say about this. The only thing I wish is that it was a squeezy tube, not so much like a pump. I love squeezy tubes, but I love the formula of this. It just makes my skin look so freaking good. I love it way more than the It Cosmetic CC Cream as well. And I think that their color selection is a lot better too. So I highly recommend this guy. If you haven't tried it, you need to. It's amazing. 
Okay, I have two concealers I want to talk about. This one is fairly new, so this is so cheating, but honestly, this is the best concealer I discovered in 2018 besides this one. It's the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer and it is so good. Last year I spoke about the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Both are still really nice, I still really recommend them, but I, to be honest, I don't even use the Tarte one that much anymore. Actually, I don't use the Tarte one at all anymore. I only use the Jouer one. I will use my ColourPop one from time to time, just like I'll use this one, or my NARS Soft Matte Creamy Concealer. I still use that one. I have a few I really like, but this by far was the best concealer I discovered this year, this past year. It has full coverage, really great, amazing coverage. It gives you everything the Tarte Shape Tape gives you, except it's not as heavy and it's not as drying as that one. If you have more dry skin, I think you might like this one a little bit more than the Tarte one. It's so creamy and it blends so nicely and it gives you a smooth like canvas underneath your eyes and it barely creases like sometimes I honestly forget to set this because there is no creasing It's pretty freaking fabulous. This one. However, I love it just as much But I love it for completely different reasons and honestly, I feel like I cannot live without this concealer This is the Tarte creaseless concealer and this isn't new or anything But it used to be in a different packaging it used to come in like a squeezy little tube and I feel like because of that, no one really used this, but they revamped the packaging and then they sent it out for PR and once I tried it in this packaging, I completely fell in love with this concealer. This is for a very specific, very specific person looking for something very specific. <laughs> so this is very similar to the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer where it's very, very thick. It's very emollient, like almost sticky when you apply it to underneath your eyes. You're like, whoa, this has like a really tacky finish, but it's not hard to blend out. Once you start blending it out, you see that it just transforms your under eyes into this dewy, delicious, youthful, fresh, beautiful look. I honestly can't even explain it. Even on my driest days where my under eyes are so crusty, my wrinkles are out of control because they're so dry, my crow's feet, when everything looks crazy and creepy, this concealer just glides over it and just moisturizes everything and it's just so hydrating and beautiful. I swear, this concealer is life. I'm wearing it today and once you set it, that dewiness, that shininess really does go away. It looks like a normal concealer once you set it. But I love that you can get the best of both worlds. You can leave it without setting it if you want that really dewy effect. Or you can set it and it lasts all day. It's just honestly a great freaking concealer. I love it. These were my favorite powders I discovered in 2018. This definitely was the year of loose powder for me. I feel like I discovered so many amazing ones. I'm just gonna quickly go over all of them because these are my top favorite. I narrowed it down to five. <laughs> Actually, no, six, because I do want to mention that I still love and adore my RCMA No Color Powder. I use that all the time, especially off camera, and it's so affordable. I have to mention that. But these I discovered this year, and I love them. This is my favorite affordable powder at the moment. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder, and it reminds me so much of the Laura Mercier Loose Finishing Powder. It gives you that really flawless, smooth look to the skin. It's not super undetectable. It's not like a barely their powder. It's more of a perfecting powder, but it makes the skin look really nice and smooth. I like baking with this. It's just a very beautiful, affordable powder, and I cannot say enough about it. It's really good. But the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder is perfect for those of you who hate powder. If you've been on the hunt, like if you've honestly been on the hunt for months or years for the perfect powder that doesn't look like anything on your skin, that doesn't really look like powder, you just want something to set your makeup and just get on with the day, I would honestly recommend this. I like using this powder especially on my extra extra dry days because I feel like it doesn't cling on to any dry patches and never looks heavy. It just never looks like powder on the skin. The Glossier Wowder and the Thrive Cosmetics Filtered Effects Soft Focus HD setting powder and translucent are actually very, very similar. I use them both in very similar ways. For a while, the Wowder was everything to me, but I have mine in the shade light medium, so I kind of felt like it was getting a little bit too dark for me the fairer I got. And this one is completely translucent, so I tend to use this one more, but I love them both. I want to say I love the Thrive Cosmetics one just a little bit more. I feel like it makes me look just a little bit more airbrushed than this one does. They both give me that airbrush look, which is what I love about them. As soon as you apply these powders, you honestly just see your pores disappear. They just fill up your pores so nicely and your face looks like a silk smooth baby's butt. 
And then I have to mention the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder because I love using this on super glam days, especially if I'm gonna be taking a lot of photos at night. For some reason, this is a really good powder to like bake with. It's like flower powder, like bake with it, I know, but it makes your under eyes look completely flawless and perfect. If you have very, very, very dry skin, I don't know if you would like this, but it makes my under eyes look amazing. I'm sorry, that was a lot of powder talk. I honestly don't even know who I am. I have such dry skin, like four years ago, I, I don't even think I was mentioning powders in my favorites videos, so. We've come a long way. I was looking at all my yearly favorites from like 2014, 15, 16, 17, wow. And I was noticing that I still really, really love the majority of the bronzers that I've been talking about year after year. Like my Too Faced Sweethearts bronzer was in it last year and it's still one of my favorite bronzers. My Marc Jacobs Tantastic bronzer, mm, still delicious, still use it all the time, gorgeous. Another bronzer I spoke about last year that I still use all the time. This is hands down the best bronzer at the drugstore, guys. I feel like it contours your skin, but also bronze your skin at the same time. They have a few different shades. I still feel like they need to come out with a deeper shade, but the regular shade bronzer is my favorite one. I feel like I can contour with this and bronze the skin at the same time. I also love the scent. It's just such a delicious bronzer. This is a two-time two-year winner, and honestly, I don't know if I could ever find a bronzer I like better at the drugstore. Like, this is it. I have to give a huge shout out to Rhea, because I have been using Rhea nonstop since literally the day I got her, and I'm not even, I haven't even dented this bronzer. I love it mainly because of the color. It has such a nice undertone that I feel like I can contour and bronze, and it never looks muddy or weird. It's like cool enough, but warm enough at the same time. It's the perfect neutral undertone. I love it, and I do love the formula as well. It's just so easy to blend, and I feel like I get a really nice contour every time I use this. And I just look so tan and sculpted, and I love this bronzer. All right, fur blush, we've got a two-time no, a two year winner. Oh yeah, two time winner here, folks. I didn't use any other blushes as much as I freaking used the Burt's Bees blushes. These were on my face like every single day, especially Toasted Cinnamon. This is my favorite nude blush of all time. Not just at the drugstore, like literally of all time. I love it because it has a barely there sheen but you can still see it on the cheeks. It's a matte blush that has a little bit of a glow, but it's not a sheeny blush that's really gonna make your pores look huge or just emphasize all the texture on your skin. It's not gonna do that. It's gonna give you a natural glow while still making the cheeks look beautiful and just smooth. Oh. I love the Burt's Bees blushes, and I didn't fall in love with all of the other makeup Burt's Bees came out with. I was like, kind of like, ah, with most of it, but the blushes, these are my favorite. I'm actually wearing Bare Peach on my cheeks right now. I love Bare Peach. This is like my favorite peachy blush. It's so good. And Shy Pink is also a really, really nice pinky blush if you're into pinks. Just saying. Okay, so for highlight, apparently I love highlights that no longer exist anymore. You guys know this is my favorite highlighter of all time. This right here, I mean, I don't know if you guys know that, but I spoke about this in my last yearly favorites. I don't use this on camera anymore because it was limited edition. This was the NARS Back to Sable Highlighting Palette. Honestly, a godsend. And then I fell in love with this, which was the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. I use the absolute crap out of this, like every day, all the time. This was also limited edition, so I don't use that on camera either. <laughs> but besides those highlights, I also used this one so much in 2018, but I didn't really use it that much on camera because it was limited edition and it went away, but I'm pretty sure it's like back. I don't know if it's back forever, but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's back. This is the Anastasia Amrizi highlight. This highlight is gorgeous. It is everything you want in a highlight. I feel like this is the first time I truly fall in love with a gold highlight. I usually like champagnes. Well, this is kind of like a golden champagne. But I usually like champagnes and pinky, like other colors, not so much gold, because gold tends to pull really yellow on my skin, but not this bad boy. This is the highlight I'm wearing on my cheeks right now, and it just, it's beautiful. But honestly, 
I love it once I set it. So I'll apply it to my skin and then I'll set my entire face with like a setting spray. And when you combine those two, this just melts into your skin and gives you like this golden glass-like appearance to the cheeks. It is so stunning. I was using this nonstop for a while in 2018 and I highly recommend it. I did, by the way, want to make a point to not mention any of my collabs in today's video. I kind of always do that in my yearly favorites videos. I don't like to talk about products that I worked on because those those are mainly the products I spoke about all year. Like, you guys know, my most used eyeshadow palettes are the Zodiac and Dream Street, hands down. I wasn't using anything the way that I was using those. All the lips I was using the majority of the years were mainly my collab, like my What's Your Sign lipstick, my Moonchild lip gloss, oh my gosh. I wear Moonchild lip gloss all the time. I knew adding a bunch of my collabs in here was just gonna drag out the video, and those are products you already know I love, so, I mean, a lot of these products are products you already know I love, but still. But anyway, I do have to mention my Essence Pure Nude Highlighter because even though I don't really use this on camera as much anymore, it's always something I grab as like a finishing touch whenever I'm doing my makeup. Like today, I put on my foundation. I did everything. I was completely done with my makeup. I got a little bit of this and I just dusted this all over my face and it kind of gave my skin an overall very subtle sheen, kind of like I'm naturally dewy and glowy like from the inside, you know? It's so, so beautiful. It's like a minimal touch but a beautiful one. Ah, I was so off that was like not even close to the Little Mermaid. The Morphe, they changed the name. Continuous Setting Mist. It used to be like the Morphe Prep and Set Makeup Setting Mist. It's now called the Continuous Setting Mist. This is the best setting spray ever. Not only because of the way it sprays, this is the most finest mist to ever exist. Probably because it's in this type of packaging, obviously, but it's like. Oh my god, so fine. Like, you don't even realize, like, wait a minute. Did I even wet my face? Like, that's how fine this mist is. It never leaves any giant water drops on your face, like so many other setting sprays do. Have you ever set your face with a setting spray and it, like, spits at you and you have this giant water droplet that just ruins your entire makeup? This doesn't do that. It sets your skin perfectly and it, and it does it in a perfect way. And not only that, I love the formula in this. It just makes my skin look really plump and like hydrated and fresh. I honestly don't know what I would do without this. I love this guy so damn much. I have to mention these two because I think they're incredible, especially for the price. This is the Catrice Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray. This is their original. It's really, really, really great. I feel like it makes my makeup last a really long time on the skin. But if you are dry like me, you will extra love this one. This is the also the Prime and Fine, but this one is the Dewy Glow fixing spray. This has a little bit of like a pearly sheeniness to it that when you apply it to your entire face, it gives you the most beautiful glow I have ever seen. And it's so damn affordable. It's crazy. It just gives you the most beautiful glowy skin you will ever need. And it's only a couple of dollars and it's a pretty fine mist. It's not like the Morphe one, but it's pretty fine. I mean, I've, I've had some setting sprays that literally spit at you. All right, let's talk about eye products. Let's talk about eye products. In my past yearly favorites videos, I've spoken about really great eye primers. And prime and eye primers, I still would say are pretty good. I discovered the P. Louise Makeup Base and I have never looked back. This is the best eyeshadow primer I have ever used in my entire life. It has a color to it, so when I put it down, it covers up all my veins and it just creates a really nice blank canvas for my eyeshadows. And I know that since I bought this, they came out with like five other shades, but mine doesn't have a name on it. This is just the original one they came out with. They have like a white one now, and I don't know what this one is, which is making me nervous because when I go to buy this again, I don't know what number it is. All I know is that it's the best eyeshadow primer I have ever used. So I have to mention the NYX Pigment Primer because this has been a lifesaver for creasy products. Not greasy, creasy. If you have really oily eyelids where things are just always creasing on you or if you have a cream eyeshadow that you love and it just always creases on you, look no further. Look no further. It is amazing. It will make all your pigments, all your glitters, all your eyeshadows stick to your lid without creasing and it'll do that the entire day. I love this 
so much. It's something I use so much, but I never really use it in videos. And it's something that I never like think about talking about because I have it on my vanity and I always just dab a little bit like in the center if I'm ever gonna use like loose glitters or if I'm ever gonna use something that creases like a mofo. This is always what I use and I'm obsessed with it. Okay, so when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I already went on my eyeshadow palette spiel earlier, but I do wanna mention these two because I really do love them. Um, this is the Tarte Man Eater palette. I spoke about this last year and I wanna include it in this yearly favorites video as well because it's still a palette I use and I take with me to travel believe it or not because it has everything you need in this little tiny box you have a black you have all your highlighting shades you have your crease shades and then you have your two like lid stars so I highly recommend the man-eater palette I don't know if this was limited edition I hope not because it honestly I feel like is a staple but I really desperately wanted to mention the Urban Decay Born to Run palette which is so weird because I've never done a video on this palette before. Like I've never done an eyeshadow tutorial on it before. This palette is so damn underrated. I never hear anybody talking about it. It's Urban Decay's best eyeshadow palette. This is the best eyeshadow palette they have ever, 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 ever created. So why don't people talk about it more? I don't know. Let's start with the packaging. First of all, it's so like compact and sleek and this mirror is incredible. You get everything you will need in this palette if you like warm eyeshadows like me because you have all your crease shades and you have all these delicious jewel toned shimmery colors that you can wear on the lid but you can also mix it up and do so many different pops of colors. You have your purples, your oranges, your greens, your blue, like you honestly have everything you could ever need in this palette. And I feel like I can't say that about every palette in my collection. I'm wearing a lot of these shades on my eyes right now. The main glitteriness is something else that I will talk about. Every single color is so buttery and beautiful and applies so well and the mattes blend like a dream. Such an underrated palette. I feel like in 2018, I really created this love for single shadows again, but not just like the regular single shadows that you can get and put in a Z palette. I'm talking about like unique single shadows, either like shimmery ones or glittery ones or like all those new pots and all those new glitter effects. And I'm just like really obsessed with that at the moment because I feel like you can buy any regular eyeshadow palette with a bunch of mattes and then really transform your look with different single eyeshadows. But I really, really, really wanted to mention the J-Cat Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousses. Especially these two shades, they are my favorite, Chrome Galaxy and Houdini. If I have to pick just one, I would say Chrome Galaxy is the best one. It is truly like the most beautiful eyeshadow in the history of the world. And I don't hear anybody talking about it. And I don't know why, because these are literally $5. And they are incredible. They are mousses, but they don't really apply on the eye like a mousse. Like, they almost give you a wash of sheeny glitteriness once you apply it. You can build this up and get like a really intense foiled look to the eye, but I love just lightly tapping my finger in this, lightly tapping it on my eye like that, and it gives like the most soft, sheeny look. It is truly beautiful. I'm actually wearing Chrome Galaxy on my lids right now, but I only have it in the very center of my lid. I'm not sure if you could even tell because I have like a lot of glitter going on, but right in the center, like right here, like boop, boop, I applied the Chrome Galaxy shade and I brought it up a little bit, and I feel like it created such a pretty like wide-eyed, glittery effect. I just... These are so damn good. The Dose of Colors Block Party eyeshadows are very pricey. These are like $21 each. I know, that's expensive. Um, but oh my gosh, these are incredible. They're very, very strange because when you put your finger in these, they feel kind of dry. They kind of feel like a dry eyeshadow that has a lot of glitter crushed in it. And it almost has like a glass-like sparkle effect to them. They are truly stunning, but this one in Encore is hands down the best one they have. Like if all of them had to disappear and I could only save one of them, Encore would be the bad boy I save. This is a beautiful, really, really warm, chocolatey eyeshadow. It has such a delicious warm undertone, but then it has a ton of gold glitters all throughout this. And just like one tap, look at this, like just like one tap on the eye and you get rich, chocolatey, delicious pigment, and it's intense. This is actually what I have on my entire lid. It gives your eyes the most beautiful sparkle. Every single time I wear this eyeshadow, when I go out, I, I, I get asked what it is. Every single time, and I'm not even exaggerating. So, 
that's gotta tell you something. Okay, so for eyeliners, it actually has not changed um, from the last year. My ColourPop Creme Gel Liners are still my favorite affordable eyeliners. They have so many colors and they last all day on the waterline. They're super creamy, I love them. But if I had to choose, like overall, what is the best eyeliner I have ever used, the Marc Jacobs eyeliners hands down are the best. I also used my M Cosmetics one a lot this year, um, the regular black one. But man, the Marc Jacobs eyeliners are unbeatable, especially these new ones. I'm uh, I'm obsessed with these new ones. These came out this year. These are the Glam Glitter eyeliners. They have like the regular matte eyeliners and then they're like sheeny eyeliners. These are the glitter ones. And I swear, they, they just get better and better every time they release eyeliners. These eyeliners are pricey, but they last forever on my waterline and I cannot get enough. I have three of my most used mascaras of 2018. And it's crazy because when I was looking back at my yearly favorites, my Kiko Extra Sculpt Volume Mascara was like, hands down my favorite mascara of all time. And once I ran out of it, I never repurchased it. So I definitely need to go on the website and buy it again because I was obsessed with it and I forgot how much I love it. But the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara is my current favorite mascara at the moment. It gives me incredible volume, incredible length, and it makes my lashes really, really, really black, and it lasts all day. I love it. If you're looking for something that's similar and you can get it at the drugstore, the uh, Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara from L'Oreal gives me a very, very similar effect, and it's a fraction of the cost. So I had to mention this because I wear this a lot. I love this mascara. And then of course, on my lazy days, this is my favorite mascara. This is the Liquid Lash Extensions from Thrive Cosmetics. It's a tubing mascara, which once you discover a really good tubing mascara, it's really hard to go back to other mascaras because these are just so easy to remove. They come off with warm water, like, like you don't get the black crap everywhere. It, Tubing mascaras are the bomb when you find a really good one because some of them don't give you that much length or volume, you know, it, you have to find a good one. And this one is the best tubing mascara I personally have ever used. They make my lashes look really, really thick and voluminized. So for brows, it doesn't really change. My Anastasia Brow Wiz is still my ride or die. There is nothing like it. Me, I have gone through probably like 45 of those things. But I have to mention, the Nude Sticks Gel. This is the best gel of all time. I feel like I've already spoken about it for like a million times, but I just wanna say it again. I would love it if Nude Sticks would do me a solid and if they would just release this gel on its own because it currently comes connected with, you know, like an eyebrow pencil. And not that this eyebrow pencil sucks, it's good. I just don't love these thick angles anymore. I prefer like a, a traditional brow wiz. But oh my gosh, this gel is hands down the best brow gel I have ever used in my life. It makes my brows stand up and have that feathery brow look for the entire day. It's like cement, it's like glue. I've never experienced anything like it, it's the best. Okay, and now last category is lips. I don't have many things to talk about because like I said, I was using a lot of my collabs, but my love for nude sticks definitely grew, definitely grew this year. I feel like I really discovered the brand this year and I have completely fallen in love with their lip products, specifically their magnetic matte, magnetic? matte lip colors. These two are my favorite, favorite, favorite. This is in the shade Joyce. It's like a really dark, dark, dark brown. And it's really, really intense, but the formula on these are so good. It honestly lasts as long as a liquid lipstick, but it's not as drying as a liquid lipstick. Like, don't get me wrong, these are matte. They will dry down matte. And if you have very dry lips, it can look a little drying but it doesn't crumble off. It doesn't get like super cracky and dry like some liquid lipsticks do. Boho is another one of my favorites. I actually think I might like Boho the best. This is the color I'm wearing on my lips right now. And it's actually the lip color I wore to my meetup, my recent meetup in Miami. So many of you guys were asking me what was on my lips and it was Boho. But I also really, really like their regular lip and cheek pencils. This one in the shade Whisper is like my favorite nude. It's so creamy and juicy. Mm. I discovered Pat McGrath lip liners in 2018 and I feel like I will never look back. They are called the Permagel Ultra Lip Pencils and they are the creamiest, most buttery, smooth lip liners yet managed to stay on your lips the entire freaking day. These are like glue to your lips, 
but yet they're so comfortable to apply. Amazing formula. They're pricey, but they're so incredible. My favorite is Contour, but Done Undone and Supernatural are also very, very, very beautiful shades. I love them. But I do want to mention the Catrice um, Ultimate Stay Lip Liners because these are also really, really great. They don't last as long as the Pat McGrath ones, but they do last a really long time on the lips, especially for the price and especially since they are very smooth, creamy lip liners. Usually lip liners like this that are really soft and creamy don't last on the lips and these really do and they're like a fraction of the cost. So I really wanted to mention it because I think they're really great and I definitely use these a lot. We've got a three time winner here, folks. This is the MAC Etc Pro Longwear Lip Pencil. It's still Hands down, one of my favorite lip liners of all time. These are very similar to the Pat McGrath ones, only the Pat McGrath ones are a little bit more glidey. They're a little bit easier to apply, which is why I like them more than the MAC Pro Longwear ones. But they both have really great formulas, and this one in etc. is like my favorite warm nude lip liner. I can't seem to find a dupe for it, so I always go back to this guy. And for three years, I've been loving you, baby. So besides the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips, the Ofra Liquid Lipsticks are the best liquid lipsticks, hands down. They're so amazing. Last year, I spoke about Manila. Manila was my favorite Ofra nude, like last year, but holy crap. When they created Verona, this became my favorite Ofra lip color ever. At least my favorite Ofra nude lip color that they have. It's so beautiful. It's a very deep nude, but it just looks so delicious on the lips. And it just reminds me of like a 90s girl. I just love this color so much. I used Verona non-stop once I discovered it. So I had to mention it. One of my favorites. And then last but not least, the M Cosmetics True Glosses were my most favorite gloss discovery of 2018. These are hands down my favorite lip glosses, like my favorite lip glosses. And I know I've spoken about my Buxom lip glosses in the past. I still love, I love them. I love the Pat McGrath lip glosses. The Anastasia ones are good. The ColourPop ones are really good, but these have such a unique formula. I can't even describe it. Magic Hour is my favorite. It's such a pretty coral. This has like a gel-like formula that just glides on your lips and it's honestly the most comfortable gloss you will ever put on your lips. It's not very glass-like, it's not super jutsy and glossy. It's more like comfortable, but it still has an incredible sheen to it, like an incredible shine. It's These are just amazing. I cannot say enough good things about them. Best gloss discovery of the year for sure. All right, we are done. Oh my gosh, I feel like I've been here for hours. Well, I mean, I have been here for hours, so I can't wait to edit this. But anyway guys, that completes this video. These were my most used, most favorite products of 2018. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below with all of your favorite Holy Girl products of the year. And if I haven't checked any of them out, I definitely will because I love testing out your favorite products. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you check out these products. These are my ride or die true Holy Grails for me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you so, so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.